take the highest bolt shit here. Give me one second. I think I got it. All right. You read the title, and you're probably confused. Where's the rewrite for season four? Well, here's the thing. I'd rather go with reimagined. And here's the biggest thing. Is I went back, you know, after watching season four. Um, I went to go see my videos to see what kind of timeline I was starting and what details needed to be pulled to season four. And I realized I didn't have any meat in there. There was nothing but... Hey, keep everything normal. Here's some end credit scenes to worry about the next uh, one. I corrected a few things. I did a few things that uh, made it a little bit different. But the biggest thing is this is supposed to be a defi definite version. Basically, more detail, more characterization. Stuff that actually makes it different from the original. And I realized I didn't do that. So I want to go back. And this will be going over seasons one and two, or season one, if it takes long enough. Because a lot of these take a minute. Like, especially season two, the two-parter finale, it took me a minute to write it down. So anyways, the liquid for the talk. Let me go turn it off my I kind of don't want to turn off my fans, so let's just go with this. So, rewriting Miraculous Season 1. And I will say this, sorry if I push any American culture onto uh, French culture. But, of course, I don't know all the stuff in French and what they do over there. Um, like before, for rewriting, I want this to be a PG-13 uh, cartoon with a 2D animation into the 3D because they can do a little bit more cooler stuff. Like sure it takes a little bit longer and it doesn't look any different from certain uh, things. Ah, great. Um, but of course the mild language um, in some blood from time to time would be nice. Um, anyways, Episodes 1 and 2, I'm taking Origins, which was okay to be in the finale, but here's the thing, is for this retelling, I'm putting in the front, that way we can get over with. So Origins um, is part is episode 1, uh, Stoneheart is uh, episode 2. Um, episode 1, it takes place on September fr uh, 2nd. This is part of the American culture transferred to French culture is what I'm talking about. I don't know when school actually starts um, or how it actually works. But anyways, um, this is the beginning of school. Um, and this is their ninth grade year or their freshman year or whatever. The start of their high school years. Um, all characters are 12 to 13 at this point. Um, and uh, they will get their birthday. Um, anyway, we meet characters, Marinette, Tom and Sabine, Dupain Che, um, we have uh, Adrian Agress, we have, uh, Natalie, and the gorilla, which is his bodyguard and the assistant to, um, his father, we have Olia, Cesare, Nino, um, Lef, Lef, Lefem, I think it is, um, uh, Mrs. Bustier, Mrs., I keep forgetting to say that, um, Kim, uh, Sabrina, Chloe, Rose, Julica, Max, Ivan, Maylene, Nathaniel, the pr Principal Damocles, um, Alex, Mayor Bourgeois, also known as Anthony, um, Cap Captain Rogers, um, and then we also have Ladybug, Cat Noir, and Hawk Moth. Um, basically it's the just the setup episode here's your characters here's the main class you're going to be worrying about here's a few of the main like the two star characters here's a few extra people on their side um and these are high schoolers so their school setting is the biggest thing 
Um, so, um, oh, you also get, to, of course, the villains Stoneheart, Master Fu, and then the Kwamis, Waze, Tiki, and Plague. Um, this is kind of, uh, Origins in Stoneheart were a pretty good formula, um, but of course the setting settings is the Dupain Chains Bakery and Residence, uh, the Egrest Mansion, I, the Eiffel Tower, um, the Football Statement Stadium, um, the Streets of Paris, and the School. Um, the transitions from episodes one to two. Um, Ivan is a is um and a random, oh, and random people start becoming Stoneheart copies. Um, and then, of course, uh, Stoneheart, um, same thing, but, um, right, like I said, these are the basics. We're just learning how the show works in episodes one and two. Um, from the ending scene for episode two, which is on September 3rd, um, uh, the a competition is announced for a local uh, weather station to have a new weather girl because their other weather girl is uh, overaged and is wanting to retire. Um, the details are Ladybug and Ken Noir um, are trouble uh, trouble getting used to their powers. Only reveal to um, the only reveal of Hawk Moth is his hand um, and his head kind of in the. Akumas he makes in the end of uh, Stoneheart. Um, his intro and uh, outro mon monologue is his hands instead of his entire uh, model for, for the first two. Um, Katu Noir gains um, admiration for a ladybug after he she captures all the Akumas from uh, Hawk Moth's head and lets him go. Um, no, but not it doesn't turn it doesn't turn into a crush um at that moment um mari blushes and hinting at a crush um and this will been build through the episodes reason for uh, ivan's acclimatization is the his first time maylene leaves during their um his confession um and the second times after he he confesses maylene is confused slash scared um, because he write, wrote, writes a poem in his own words which doesn't translate well um, and then Chloe has to say something about Ivan um, and uh, unlike the regularly Ivan had the mental mentality at the time to wait for Maylene's reaction but with Chloe it kind of burst his bubble um, we're now on to uh, Episode 3, which is Stormy Weather. Um, this will be taking place in October 5th. Um, because I want them to have at least a month's worth of superheroing to get used to their powers and who they are and get their partnership work together. Um, note, in the time between episodes from background characters, um, some background characters are shown by the news to have been acoupatized, so some random guy in the background he becomes akumatized just to fill in the timeline and that there are akumatizations between episodes that we don't see because they're background characters or just characters that aren't really the greatest but there's something he's desperate to get what he wants so he takes anything he needs and can get um this also shows the progression between cat noir and ladybug um, ladybug will be able will be a better hero the one, uh, the one with the plan, um, but a little clumsy at the beginning. Um, uh, at the beginning, um, Cat Noir is the better fighter um, since he had training, um, and, it, and it comes with the basic idea of some plan. So he'd be like, "I have an idea," and Ladybug builds off of that. Um, and then Ladybug and Cat Noir are friends. Cat Noir has some puns, um, but not a lot. He, he, he 
just breaks the tension here and there. He doesn't use puns for his his personality. Um, and Ladybug does have some cockiness. Um, that way she's not a huge Mary Sue. Um, um, characters we meet in this episode are finally we meet Gabriel addressed. We meet a the news uh, the newswoman, um, uh, which is the M Manon's uh, mother. I think her name's like. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to pronounce it, never mind. Um, she's a friend of Sab Sabine's. Um, her daughter, Sab uh, Manon, Manon, um, the both fin uh, final contestants, the only one I remember is Aurora, the one who gets akumatized. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, Alec, the show host, um, and then the setting is the weather station. Um, reasoning for the akumatization is that Alex and others created a system um, making Aurora lose uh, a, and competition um, con, uh, contestants are friends uh, after after okay so basically there's a system that Alec and other people set up for Aurora to lose even though she's the more qualified and after everything is revealed that it was a cheat um, the other contestant comes up to her makes friends with her um, and basically says, I'm only in this competition competition to gain whatever I can from it to build my career. Um, it wasn't meant to be, I'm going to win this no matter what. It's just, I wanted to have something on my back before I jumped into the careers I want. Um, just to get out there, basically. And the MC, um, end scene is Adrian's birthday is coming up and Natalie asks um, Gabriel and he says no. Now we have to go all the way to, because I actually tried to go back to back, but I couldn't find enough space. Space, And then here we are for episode four, um, The Bubbler. This is taking on my birthday, which means Adrian's birthday is my birthday, just because it's a better time zone. Um, but, but unlike uh, Thomas Asterisk, I'm actually just implementing uh, a birthday instead of my own person and how things are supposed to be. These are actual another universe, so only the reason I'm changing that is just a little personal touch. Um, you redesign Nino's acclimatization into more of a partier slash DJ instead of a freaking giant bubble wand. Um, the reasoning for this is, of course, Adrian's party rejection. The details are, um, we see more of Gabriel's restrictions. Chloe openly talking, uh, taking shots at Adrian's heart, only to disappoint his fangirls and other interests. So she isn't even doing this because she actually wants to date Adrian. She's doing it to go in front of other girls and say, I have the opportunity that you don't. That's the only reason she does it. She doesn't do it to actually gain his his uh, relations. Um, like, is a part of a uh, big. Sh she's a big show off with nothing, but uh, what what did I say here? Um, and then uh, let's see. She's a big show off with nothing but cheater. I don't know what I was saying there. Um, it's just a competition to her basically, and she and. She has to win everything and uh, wins to show off. Um, we see Ladybug acting um, on jealousy um, when she's playing the record by using her uh, lucky charm to disrupt a dance between Chloe and Adrian. Um, showing that her emotions can cloud her judgment. We see Mari had a scarf for Adrian, um, showing that. Uh, she, she's a fashion, uh, an as, aspiring fashion designer. Um, and aside from the jealousy, sh uh, shows the beginning of, of his crush, oh, of her crush, um, developing. And when she keeps, um, the fact that she's, um, that she made it. Basically, here's a scarf, I like you, um, and, and that gives a little idea that she's starting to develop her feelings for him. And then, uh, but she's the uh, person she is. Uh, it shows a little bit when she said she keeps that information to herself when he thinks it's from his father. Um, 
It just shows her caring, self-sacrifice, and affection towards others. Um, we learn on the other side of the coin about Adrian and his mother's uh, disappearance. Not not a death, but a disappearance. Um, and he has social rejection. Um, like he's like social anxiety and all that. Um, and he has the inability to express himself because of the restriction that he has. Um, and Chat Noir is his outlet. Um, and with Neo, he shows his nerdiness and imperfections. So basically, when they hang out, he actually can be himself. Um, and he drops his guard, basically. And the end scene is Alex invites everyone to a new museum section. Um, and she tells that her father is the curator. And the new section is Egyptian. And here we go, episode 5, The Pharaoh, taking part the day after on October 13th. Um, the new location is, of course, the museum. The, Akum the Akumatized reason is because Alex's brother is put down by their father um, for his theories. So basically, his theory is that this pharaoh, that, that this uh, section covers a little bit of, because um, there's a lot more than just one pharaoh. That this section has um but the sparrow he lost his beloved and he was trying to do a ritual to bring her back but of course a previous ladybug stopped her and that's his theory is that ladybug is the is, is, is his like arch nemesis and he was trying to bring back his beloved and um here's the details is tiki reveals that uh, most kwamis um slash miraculous are a part of some history. Plague with the Dinosaurs, Atlantis, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Um, also, certain historical figures once were miraculous holders. A previous ladybug stopped the pharaoh's ritual to bring back his beloved. Alia gathers their, her, this theoretical information um, just in case. The, uh, because she runs the lady blog at this point. Because it's been a month in some in some in like a week, uh, the invitation to the museum um, turns into a school field trip showing the uh, kind of teacher Miss Bustier is. Hey kids, instead of making this a uh, learning day, let's go to the museum and learn something there, and we will learn what we're on about this week. Um, the pharaoh is. Uh, uh, the pharaoh is accurate with the Egyptian gods. Uh, one, uh, one being a theorist, you require to look up what you're actually theorizing about. Two, their father is a museum curator slash historian. They were told stories of history, even against their own will, as they grew up. Um, little note is that Alex and her brother basically ace every single history-related uh, school topic that that they get graded on because they have historical backgrounds um, and in information. So um, this also helps Alex when she becomes Bonix in the future because she knows when this time period, when this happens, how this is supposed to happen. That way in case anything switches in the timeline, she can go back there and fix it. Um, when the Pharaoh tries to use Alia, there is a mature joke about her body, just like She's not the greatest sacrifice I am. And then Allie's like. Honey I'm fine. So that's part of the PG-13. I wanted to bring in. Um, the end scene is Allie putting together evidence. For the lady blog. Um, taking the theories. Taking what they see. And is basically trying to get like. The identities. Uh, and who they are. How they are. She she theorized that the ladybug we're, we're have right now is millions, well, thousands, maybe million years old. Um, basically saying this is the same ladybug from all that time ago. Um, episode 6 is Lady Wi-Fi. This is October 20th. Um, so this is a week after. Um, the Akumatai, oh, actually new, there's the new location, the uh, Bourgeois Hotel, basically... Um, the mayor has created a hotel for their more higher uh, equivalent guests, so rock stars and other well-known people can take their 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 living situation there. It's not a actual hotel; it's just a living situation to accommodate their higher people. That way, Paris 
has like this huge um, like cast of famous people just because of a hotel. And just Jagged Stone and his alone is a piece. He can basically rent out that his money that comes in basically pays for that hotel alone. Um, so that's why the Paris itself can operate. Um, the akumatization reason is that Ladybug blows Alia off during an interview. Um, um, she's trying to interview her, but she just blows her off. Details is Alia tries to unmask Ladybug um, after seeing her drop a book. Um, same as the, the schools. First asking Mari if she would tell her something equivalent to it, and she says, "If I if I didn't promise to someone for secrecy, all you um, it would be okay." And that tells how what of a person she would Amari is that she won't tell a promise to someone even if they're the most trustworthy people. Alia drops Chloe um, as a runner for Ladybug after seeing her in the Ladybug costume, not seeing that they're the same kind of uh, look. Uh, Ladybug tells Lady Wi-Fi that she got the book from a library. Um, not a complete lie because the school library, but of course all libraries have access to this book. Um, Mari tells Le uh, Alia to meet her at the uh, news station, which turns into an interview with Ladybug. Um, but no uh, personal identi identify or like self-personal questions. Um, the end scene is Kim gets into an argument with Alex, uh, which turns into a declared race. Um, episode 7 is Time Breaker. Um, the um, actually new location is the school racetrack. There's the Akuma Reason, which is her mother's um, watch is broken. Um, this takes place the day after, on October 21st. Um, Alex's parents are divorced. She barely sees her, her mother. Her mother. Um, so basically, her parents are divorced. She barely gets to see her mother. And that watch was the very one of the only few things she had. Um, Shat makes his personal promise to protect Ladybug at all costs. Because in this point, he jumps in front of her to get touched by Time Breaker to get completely erased from time. So his life force got used. Um... He'll throw himself in in danger to protect Ladybug because she's the one who can uh, fix everything at the end of the day. Um, the end scene is that Officer Rogers sees people feeding pigeons and prepares to write tickets. Um, episode 8, I think we're on. Mr. Pigeon, literally the day after that. Um, the 22nd, um, because he's writing notes, so it's going to be the next day. New, the lo new locations are the park right next to the school and Mari's, uh, the Dupain Chain Bakery, um, and the Glass Pyramid with all the art. <clears throat> the akumatization reason is that mistreating the pigeons, um, the details is that Officer Rogers being the chief of police is one of the most serious and strictest cops um, there is. Um, the end scene is that Master Fu, um, her, his love interest, treats the pigeons, um, the pigeon fellow, to a pigeon housing on a rooftop, um, and they become friends. And um, Nathaniel is writing a uh, comic based uh, using Mari's likeness because he uh, likes her or something. Two days later, October 24th, um, Eve Illustrator, episode 9. The new location is the rivers underneath, like the bridges and all that. Um, with, um, with strong enough wheel, you can fight and even break an Akuma. That's one of the biggest things that we learned from this episode. Um, the Akumatization reason is that no one um, seemed to understand the freedom of create creativity. Details is that Mari um, does let Nate down. Um, as nicely as possible, and tells her that he hasn't. She has an, He has another. She has another guy. Shat and Mari, during this Akuma, have a good personality bouncing relationship. Um, in the end, so basically they, be, they become friends. So Mari shot fan can have something. I have like dark spots now. That's weird. Sorry. Um, but basically. Um, Marinette and Shadnu are, are friends, um, Nate, um, 
Omari and, and Nate agreed to go to an art club for creativity workshop so she can get design uh, notes and he can get comic notes. Um, and he can continue making the comic with Mari, but not in a romantic way. Um, let's see here. Uh, Shat takes Nate's advice about creativity and makes anything um, in an art form is what Nate says. So he starts using puns to lighten moods. And he also, for some reason, takes the time to make cat puns. Of course he does. Um, in the end scene, the mayor buys Chloe a solid gold bracelet, um, and it's going to be Parents' Day. Um, welcome to episode 10. This is October 25th. Um, the new location uh, for this is Town Hall. Um, this is where, of course, the mayor works. Uh, the acclimatization reason is that the mayor tells Roger to arrest the thief of, of Chloe's bracelet. This doesn't have to be the Dupain chains. Um but is fired for ignoring an order. Um, the details is this shows the great the greatness of the mayor, um, how much Roger's job means to him, um, and the end scene is that the, uh, Theo, the uh, sculpture, um, sculpture, uh, sculpt, sculptus, sculptus, um, sees Chat Noir and Ladybug save the day, and gets the mayor's approval for a statue showing. Um, episode 11 is Copycat. The new location is the warehouse is off, off, off the ocean side. Or well, the sea, whatever, there by. Um, and this is on October 30th. And I'll go ahead and say Copycat is basically just Chat Noir, but a villain. Um, Chat, in the end, does say it wouldn't have been a bad costume. You know, he, he's like, hey, you can be me for Halloween. I don't mind that. It would have been a great thing for tomorrow. Um, the, let's see. He, Of course, the acclimatization reason is that the jealousy for Chat Noir over Ladybug. Um, Theo, in details, Theo is a gr uh, grade higher than Mari. Um, Chat's feelings are starting to develop for Ladybug, but won't act on them until Valentine's Day. So he says, I'll let them develop for the next few months, and if I still feel like this, by Valentine's Day, I will do something about it. I will say something about it. Um, so he can make his feelings of, uh, make sure his feelings of love. Um, this will sh uh, show Ladybug and Chat Noir's trust and knowing of each other. That way it's like, you know, he's captured and uh, the Theo's copycat goes to try to, you know, persuade her. And she's like, yeah, I, I know my and Chat Noir in and out. You're not him. Um... And the end credit scene is uh, basically Ladybug points to a uh, oh yeah that uh, that there's gonna be a vote for the mayor here soon, um, and the loser will have a chance at being acclimatized. So it's time to get ready. Um, let's see here, off November third. We're finally in November. Um, welcome to Dark Blade. The new location is a fencing school where Adrian takes his lessons. Um, oh, I did not do an acclimatization reason. Um, oh, he lo loses the mare um, running. Uh, we meet Adrian's fencing teacher, who has uh, an uh, um, ascendant who uh, who uh, terrorized and conquered, and he runs and he's running for mayor. Um, so he is an ascendant who was terrorizing who was theorized to uh, conquer. And uh, he's now running for mayor against uh, Bourgeois, uh, Anthony. Else than everyone, um, that's uh, used, everyone's used to Anthony, um, but thanks to that theorized background, he loses. He learn, uh, we learn of the rock star Jagged Stone. Um, this is his first appearance in the show. Uh, Shed Noir and Ladybug aren't prepared due to the class doing a school vote for class president, so they're already occupied, um, and which Mar Mari wins in for helping the class prepare for Dark Blade. Um, so she wins because she's able to help the class protect against Dark Blade. Um, Adrian does show a little bit of uh, his Chad Noir side, and Mari does show 
for Ladybug side by being a leader during that that attack. Um, they are now also growing as people. So basically, they were confident in their their hero persuade uh, personas. Now it's going to the life where they can actually be strong enough as normal people. The end scene is that the class is told that there will be a film competition um, across the school. So basically, you have, to, you have a few, let's see, I said they had 10 days to make a film um, and present it, and they would win. Um, this is episode 13, Horrificator. This is the mid-season finale, and this takes place on November 15th, so never mind, it's 12 days. Um, so Chloe makes fun of Maylene's gentle nature because she's too scared for a horror film and that's what they're trying to do for their film. Um, the details is we finally get a look at Ivan and Maylene's relationship since Stoneheart. We also have a, them grow together as people. Uh, Jellica is also shown um, that she's into more uh, darker expect, uh, a aspects of life such as horror um, and uh, like creepier creatures. Um, then Mari um, and Adrian try to do their kissing scene. Um, this makes Mari start to stumble her words and thoughts when she's with Adrian. So because of this attempt, attempted kiss, she does start getting a little brain fuzzled around him. Um, so originally she would be a little bit more chill, but now that she had that almost kiss, it's like, whoo! The end scene is a miraculous uh, prepare for a holiday and we skip straight to December 25th um, the Christmas special not episode 14 uh, Claus Santa Claus um, this shows how alone Adrian is feeling um, without his parents one being uh, disappeared the other one working um, he has also has no friends and most of them are busy with family um, also the workers went home so he doesn't even have them um, episode 14, uh, now that we're done with the Christmas special, because all it was was Adrian lon Loneliness. Um, episode 14 is uh, Dark Cupid. We now jump another two months. That way we can get rid of snow, and we can just go straight to um, the Chat Noir uh, expression, the confession. And yep, Valentine's Day, here we are. It's February 14th. The new locations is a Love River, the Wish Fountains, and Andre's Ice Cream. The Akuma is that Chloe rejects Kim. Kim only saw Chloe's looks, not the brat. So Shat, tr and, uh, Shat tries to confess, um, but uh, he learns quickly that uh, that emotions can get in the in the, the way of their hero, heroine type things. This introduces um, the friend trio of Max, Alex, and Kim. Um, that means they're all better best besties and all that. Um, also, this shows Hawk Moth that someone, someone's acclimatization can be overwhelmed by their goal instead of his. So basically, they can go do their own thing instead of do what Hawk Moth, Moth wants. So because when uh, he got uh, Catnoir got struck by an arrow, he asked him to help him instead of took the miraculous. Um, and the end scene of this is Kim is swimming uh, with a partner. I think her name is Undyne. Um, and that girl seems to be lovestruck. And uh, Sabine uh, tells Mary, Mari, um, of an upcoming uh, cook-off that her uncle on her side uh, is coming for. And episode 15 is Kung Fu. Um, this is a week after, on the 21st of February. Um, the new location is a game show studio. Um, the Akuma uh, reasoning is no one believes that someone tampered with his dish. Um, hint, um, Chloe's um, bettering herself during this episode. So basically people say, uh -uh, don't be like that anymore, Chloe. And she's slowly, slowly, like a little pinch of salt better. Um, the details is that we learn more about um, Sabine's Chinese culture in her family on that side um and more adrian um <laughs> more of adrian because his diets he's like like a like uh when he learns what what the stuff one kung fu is attacking he's like 
I'm not supposed to have this because of my diets, man. <laughs> um, let's see here. Then we have the end credit scene. We see Adrian and Mari getting ready for a competition. Oh, a Adrian and Max getting ready for a gaming competition. And episode 16 is Gamer, which I got confused with Gamer 2. Um, this is February 28th, so a week after um, Kung Fu. Um, the glasses on Gamer will be ones and zeros. Um, the akumatization reason is he got knocked out of the competition um, spot by Mar Marinette. Um, details is that Adrian and Mari are uh, they're gamers, basically. They're gamers by heart. Um, we also learned that Mari and her parents on their off time um, they have a little family get a uh, little thing where they do uh, gaming with each other. So she got really good by doing that. And instead of uh, Mari just jumping in because Adrian is in the competition, no, she's just gaming because she wants to game. So when she hears about a gaming competition, she wants to actually go and play just to play. Which of course kicks Max out and makes him sad, which makes him gamer. Um, so it's actually just... You know, she actually wanted to try it out. Um, and when they try to actually train both her and Adrienne, of course she sees that her feelings are going to get in the way of, one, the competition, and two, she see sees that thanks to Gamer, she's like, I can't do this. One, Adrian. Two, I let someone that I'm close to down. So she just, just gives the position back to Max. Um... And uh, we also get foreshadowed that think if you think about it, you're gaming with someone. Ladybug and Shino are fighting with each other, are fighting and partnering up against Hawk Moth. If she were to learn that Shinoir is Adrian, she couldn't function and be a team. That's basically what that foreshadowing was. Um, the Spock, as he spot back to Max. Um, she does tell Max that she does have a crush on Adrian and that it's best for, for it anyways. And so he's the first ever guy to avoid from Maylene, Julica, and all that big girl group. This is the first guy to know about her crush. Um, like there was hint towards Nate, but Max plain out knows. Um, let's see here. Um, the end scene is that Alia invites class to the zoo to see her, what her father does. Episode 17. Um, we're on March 2nd. We're in March now. Um, this is Anna Man. Welcome to the zoo for the new location. The uh, commentization reason is everyone is messing with his animals. Um, during the, the details is that Alia and Nino do become a couple. Um, Ladybug will take risk if she has a plan. Alia's dad does tell um, his passion for animals, and Kim is willing to challenge anything. <laughs> um, in the end scene, Chloe is next to Adrian and Shat. Um, oh wait, no, no, no. Oh, so basically, Chloe next to Adrian and Sh and Chat Noir is Ladybug's number one fan, and this goes into. Something that's not even supposed to be how I, I, I wrote it. Um, because the actual episode isn't even this. Uh, episode 18, Anti-Bug. March 5th. Um, basically, the akumatization this time is just... Late, like, pull off a copycat of Chloe doing a ladybug. And this is Anti-Bug. Um, ladybug ignores Chloe as a fan... And that's the reason why she got akumatized. The details that Chloe's feelings, emotions, and morals constantly sway um, from one side to the other. Um, the end scene is that Sabine asks uh, Mari to babysit Manon. Episode 19 is The Puppeteer. This is March 7th. Um, oh, I need to hurry this up. Um, uh, akumatization reason is that she can't get a hold of the dolls that Mari has made for Ladybug, Cat Noir, and a few other villains. Um, the details is that Manon gets lonely without her mom, who's a, the, you know, the newscaster. Um, she, she's, uh, lonely without her mom being at work a lot. 
Um, so partly reason why she acts out. The end scene is that class pictures are the following week. And welcome to March 12th, episode 20, Reflecta. The, the reasoning is that she got bullied for her looks. Um, the details is that Chloe is jealous of both Julika and Mari for their looks. Um, but Julika is the only one who technically can't, won't fight back um, for the bullying. Where Mari's just, get away from me. <laughs> you, you brat. <laughs> um, this does build history about all the classmates aside from Adrian and uh, Alia because they're the newbies of this year. Everyone else was previous friends or, you know, the bully. Chloe was the bully to Julika and Mari for those years. Um, the end scene is a journalist is a um, for a company is asked to take photos of uh, his idol, uh, Jagged Stone. Episode 21, Pixelator. This is on March 14th. So, two days after. Um, the akumatization reason is Jagged Stone gets mad for him taking um, photos without his uh, permission and to not give him privacy um, and tells him to leave. The details is that Chloe scene uh, shows off the uh, the redesign of the hotel. So the hotel after, um, I think, Lady Wi-Fi, uh, it gets redesigned. Um, after the uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir stuff that's happened on. So they're making it more, we have heroes and stuff. Um, Jagged Stone does forgive the journalist, but tells him um, to ask permission respectfully. Um, the end scene is that I think it's X, Y, and Jagged will face off in a musical competition. Um, episode 22, Guitar Hero. Oh, guitar. Alright. I thought someone was going to burst in here real quick when I was in the middle of talking. Um, guitar Villain, March tw uh, episode 22, March 19th, five days after Pixelator. Um... The reason is XY is beginning to be a brat and disrespectful towards Jagged. The details is we meet Jagged's pet alligator Fang, and then we also learn that XY, another like weird put together music guy, um, he's Jagged's producer. Oh, well, the producer of Jagged, that XY is his son. Um, we also learn uh, that Jagged noticed Mari and asked for something for him to be. Him, like something, oh, Queen, I'm like confusing myself. Um, so he asked for something, him. Um, basically, uh, he asked for his style kind of things. Like, I want her to go on stage with something that just says me. And he makes, she makes, uh, she shows that she can design more than just clothes by making the glasses. And this puts her into a new category that she's actually messing with, um, people that are uh, popular um and then her the end scene is that rose has a gift for the prince that's coming to visit paris um episode th 23 is princess fragrance and this is on march 23rd so four days after guitar villain um the accumatization re reason is that chloe destroys rose welcome gift for the prince and this rejects rose's kindness um, the details is that she hinted, she's hinted to have some kind of special needs. Um, she also makes friends with the prince. Um, the end scene is that Nino is invited to a game show, and we also see a sidewalk m magician who is also invited. Um, episode 24 is Simon Says, March 20, uh, 31st. Um, this is the very end of March. Um, equipment, the commentization reason, um, he gets thrown out, um, of the show for unfair reasons, which the reasoning is that they asked for something that's not within his skill set. Um, the details, um, more Gabriel nastiness, so I'm more of a worse person. That's really it for this episode. Um, we, oh yeah, and then we also learned that Alec is, is just a crap bird. Um, end scene is that Maylene asks Amari to have a hat for her father for an upcoming show. Episode 25, The Mime. Um, April 13th, 
So we have 13 days since Mark last episode. Um, he is fired for from the show, um, which we'll learn here in the details. That Maylene's father is shown to be a passionate. Um, he's going to be passionate with his work, but tries to put other things ahead of his work sometimes, especially his daughter. Um, and this also tells us that Maylene expresses herself thanks to her father being things like mimes and other things for shows. This tells her she can express herself in her own way. Um, but because of him putting stuff ahead of his job, he gets late. He's not able to do what he's supposed to. And basically, during this, sh uh, during the show setup, he's not able to get to the bus in time. So he is fired, which we learn is his substitute that's supposed to go in for him um he basically gives him misinformation um which really it could be just solved by this person said this where are you and then she should have been like well we can correct that real quick substitute you're fired for telling our main star misinformation um, but anyways, the end scene is that the class is told of a new student, Lila. And here's episode 26, the finale of season 1, because this is already too long, and I told you this is a long description, um, is Volpina. This is on April 16th, so only three days after the mime. Um, Mari is, um, the reason is that Mari calls her out for lies. And the details is that when uh, Lila is akumatized, instead of being taken over like a zombie, she al al allies herself with, with Hawk Moth. Um, and Lila lives a false life with so many achievements, but no one double checks them. So the info is just believed, and she bullies Mari, and uh, she tells her that about her powerful lies, and... Uh, Mari gets a scare with an oncoming Akuma, and she's able to get herself back in shape to get the Akuma away. So even the main, one of the main stars has a problem with Akumas um, in the very final uh, episode of season one. And the end scene is that Hawk Moth is thinking that he may have been discovered as Ladybug thanks to herself. Um, she believes she has a theory on who Hawk Moth is. So basically, just to take away from this is basically, here's more personality for these people. Here's more reasons why this is going to be into the next episode. Here's why this event happening. It's just not just some bull crap. It's just something that builds over time. The main two stars, I understand there's teen love and all that, but I want to give them time. These are two people that are a little bit higher than some random teenager. Marinette is one is most the most re responsible not responsible, but she's the most respectful kind of people because that's how she was brought up. She's just not gonna be a weirdo to her crush. She's probably had more crushes than that. Um and she's more respectful to the people that come for for her, her feelings and stuff. Um and I feel like she wouldn't do this kind of stuff in the show and based on her personality in the beginning this is how it should be she starts with like a uh, this guy ain't too bad a little bit of a blush and then she's learn like her feelings build and then it starts getting noticeable to her that she has a crush and then she starts telling people hey i have a crush i know you like me but i kind of have my own like goal <laughs> um and uh Chat Noir, instead of just going straight for Ladybug, is he says, oh my god, this is an amazing woman. Then he notices that there's some kind of butterflies in his chest. And he and this is the first time he felt like this. And he wants to make sure he's not jumping to conclusions. Because if he does this in his actual life, he would get, like punished right off the bat so he's just like i don't want to get hurt in any kind of way so i'd rather make sure 
I am fully knowledgeable of my feelings to towards this person. And of course, I didn't cover this, um, I believe. I, I may have passed it real quick. But Chat Noir does not uh, end up telling his feelings like he's, he promised himself for February 14th, Valentine's Day. Because he, no well, actually I did mention it in the details. Basically, he notices that his hero, hero life kind of got in the way of that. And he'd rather find a better point in time to do it. Or in until it gets unbearable. He'd rather wait until it's unbearable and you know, like super out of the water to actually do something about it. He'd rather not do it when they're so busy with it, with villains out at the butt. But basically, I... I, I sharpened the feelings of our main two heroes. I made people smarter. I made better reasons. Um, and then, of course, I also made a little bit more stuff. Of course, you can throw in your own stuff in there. It's a PG-13, so little dirty jokes can be thrown in there. We can pull a Pixar right now. But there, there, there you go. That's that's my season one reimagining, not my rewrite. This is a reimagining. Um, I may come back to this uh, video and re-art it later on when I have the time. Right now, I'm trying to catch up on videos. I want to at least have two to three weeks backed up so I can start learning other things. I want to animate. I want to do artwork. I want to do editing. But thing is, I have. I'm basically trying to keep up with a little bit of videos that I'm kicking out. I don't want I don't want to do day to day. I want to be so far ahead that I think I can take a break and get on something real quick. So I normally have two days off. Right now I have two days off a week. So I'll take one to catch up on videos to get myself further out. And then the other one will be me learning more stuff. And that's what I'm trying to set myself up for. Because right now, I'm in the middle of probably a job. I, I need to find another job here soon because it's kind of just... And the other one is driving, which super close right now. Probably by the time you see this... Actually, no. you won't. It won't be by the time you see this. It'll probably be like the week after I have already taken my test by then. Um, but that's something that I want to get out of the way and once I get my test I can work towards the car and stuff but anyways I'll see you guys in the next video I have some people waiting on me I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye